And uh, while, while they're receiving that offering, I would like to, to welcome a, a new friend to the house of God. We're, we're so excited and we're glad that Brother Jason Crabb has come here to minister the Word of God with us and to be with us today. I think we're up for a powerful day that God's going to bless and lift us. And uh, Brother Jason is a, a son of the Commonwealth of Kentucky. In, in many ways, he's a hometown boy. He grew up right down the road in Ohio County. Do I have any Ohio County folk out there today? I suspect some, of, some friends and family might be out there. We welcome you to the house of God. And uh, God's taken Jason's music, taken it around the world. He's won multiple Grammys now and, and really a voice for the gospel and the shed blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Y'all welcome Jason as he comes. Come on, give him a big His Church welcome. thankful for God's Word. I'm thankful for God's Word this morning. Glad to be here. Now, they told me not to stand on this. I said, what is that? They said, it is a pulpit that comes up, up out the ground. Is there something that I push for it to happen? Yeah, it's coming. This is cool. I've never seen this before. I'm on. It is good to be back in my home state. I absolutely love Kentucky. I miss it so bad. I moved to Nashville, Tennessee, and uh, but the Lord knows my heart. Anytime my wife says, honey, would you like to move back to Kentucky? She better know that my bags are already packed. <laughs> I love, love Kentucky. Now, Nashville's great. Man, that is the coolest thing ever. <laughs> I want one. I want one. All right, I know I'm not going to keep you very long today. Um, and I, somebody say amen. I do want to say this. you got to come back for tonight. You have to. I know a lot of people come on Sunday mornings, and they think, oh, praise God, I got that done. You know what I mean? And but not here, okay? Tonight, you've got to come back. You're going to hear one of the best bands out of Nashville. We absolutely love them, and uh, they play with us, and they're phenomenal. I love them. Plus, my daughters are here, and my wife. They never come to my concerts. They don't. They've heard me all their life. So they're going to be here. I want you to uh, be able to hear my oldest uh, sing as well. And we'll have her sing a, a special as well. So, and God's doing great things uh, in their life. So everybody say it pays. It pays to be in the right place. It pays to be in the right place. Amen? It pays to be in the right place. Jeremiah, why don't you just turn to Jeremiah just for a moment. Jeremiah 1. And let's just start reading for a moment at 4. And who knows how long we're going to read, so we'll just keep on going. Number 4. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee. Oh, wait. Has everybody got it? Good. Before I... Uh, let's see, form thee in the belly. I knew thee, and before thou comest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee and ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Then saith I, oh, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. But the Lord said unto him, Say not that I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. All right, I love this passage of Scripture. Love it. I love it for a lot of reasons. Number one, I felt like Jeremiah pretty much in the beginning of, of my life and still do today a lot of times because I feel so unworthy, I mean, uh, of, of speaking and preaching uh, because here's the thing. I grew up with a great uh, preacher in my house, which was my daddy. He was my pastor. He was my corrector. He was the man that I followed, uh, and he was really good. 
I, I listened to, uh, you know, T.D. Jakes growing up and, and R.W. Shambach and those great uh, A.A. Allens that would, would, would speak. And, and, and I'm thinking, man, I can't preach, but I can't speak. And, and see, here's the problem. I started comparing myself to all of those. But God did not call us to comparisons. He called us to what he has for us. The cool thing about this passage of scripture, before you were formed in your mother's belly, you were already a thought of God. You are already a thought of God. He already knew you. Isn't that amazing? He knew what color hair that you were going to have, how tall you were going to be, how pretty you were going to be, how, how pretty you were going to be. Amen. <laughs> He already had you planned out. You know what I'm saying? He knew you before he formed you. And guess what else? There's some DNA there that he knew about too. He knew your calling. He knew what you were called to. He knew your destiny. He knew your purpose. He knew everything about you. He, 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 matter of fact, I believe heaven was excited. A lot of people, you know, I, I, I love this passage of Scripture, and my mind just wonders sometimes, but I really wonder what happened when, when you took your first little breath and first little cry. You know, I know that maybe the nurses and the, and the uh, doctors, you know, they heard a little familiar sound, right? I believe the gates of hell shook. I believe demons tremble. What, wait, I can see some of you now. What, what are you talking about? Here's what I'm talking about. I believe the very moment that you let your first cry and your first little whimper out, I believe the gates of hell started shaking and said, oh no, they're here. Oh no, they're alive. The ones that we've been hearing about, they're here. Are you kidding me? That's me. Beaverdam, Kentucky, Orangeboro, Kentucky, I, I, Kentucky. <laughs> yes, you. Yes, you. Yes, you. Yes, you. Not only did the gates of hell shake and tremble, but I believe angels stood to attention and said, oh, listen to that. There's another one of God's creations as they applaud. Why? Because God doesn't make any junk. Everything is perfect in God's alignment. His timing is perfect. Everything is right. It's awesome. It's awesome. It's amazing. You are somebody. You are something special. Turn to your neighbor right now and say, neighbor, you're something special. <laughs> Come on now. Some of y'all didn't really... You really didn't act like it. Come on, tell them, tell your neighbor right now. Say, neighbor, you're something special. Mm -hmm. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. You see, the thing is, a lot of us base all of this off of feeling. Feeling, emotion. Look, I love more than anything a good service. I love it when the Holy Ghost falls in a building. I love it more than anything. You talking about getting filled up. Holy Spirit falls in the building. Man, you can get more out of that service than any, I mean, a uh, hundred services. You could just, if, if the glory of God truly falls, which I believe is gonna fall this morning, if the glory of God really falls, get ready. You, 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 you can be enlightened to the, to the mysteries of God and to what he has in store for you. But here's what I'm, I'm going to talk to you about just for a second. What happens when the lights goes out? What happens when this beautiful, I'm, by the way, your praise and worship band, first class. <laughs> so you need to be proud. What? In the middle of Orangeburg, Kentucky, you got some of the best music there is. Yes. But what happens when it's out and you about into the middle of Monday, right? And all hell's breaking loose around you. It's feeling, feelings, feelings. Our feelings, our emotions is a mess. 
sometimes. Tuesday, you work in the job, and you know that person right beside you is getting on your nerves. You understand what I'm saying? Hmm? You've been cut off three or four times trying to get to work, and the next thing you know, you get the wonderful California howdy out the window at you, and they ain't waving being nice. You think it's bad around here? Go to Nashville. They're horrible. They'll yell at you for no reason. I had one guy stop his car in the middle of the road. His anger was so bad. Slid it sideways and stopped and got out of his car and started coming at me because he thought I was a little close to him. I thought, you come any closer and you're going to feel how close I'm getting to you. I have my babies in the car. You understand what I'm saying? Hey, I, I, I got my card now. I got my card now. <laughs> Somebody say, yeah, you got your crazy card. It don't matter what you call it. It does not matter what you I got it. So here's the deal. It, you know, at that moment, sometimes you're calling, you don't feel called. You don't look at the scripture and go, I, yeah, God has a, a purpose for me. I don't feel it right now. Matter of fact, I don't even feel saved. You ever been there before? Three or four people in it. Oh, God, not, not me. I feel saved all the time. <laughs> really? Come on. Feelings and emotions are like this. <laughs> like the good stock market. You know what I'm talking about. It's just up and down, up and down. It's like a roller coaster ride. Praise God for a good stock market. Amen. But the, you know what I'm talking about? Let's just talk about the roller coaster. It, it, it's up and down, up and down. And that's what life is about. And emotion is, is, is like sometimes. But it doesn't mean it's the truth. The deal is that you've got to feed yourself so much the truth that it drowns out the emotion that you're feeling. When you're in the middle of your day in, on a Wednesday or on a Tuesday in the middle of work and, and everybody, everything's just, just, you know what I'm saying. It's like, ah, you need to start going. I am an overcomer by the blood of the lamb. I, 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 I am the head and not the tail. I am saved. Why? Because I have confessed my sins. That one I just talked about. And, and, and I have asked the Lord to forgive me. I'm covered by the blood and who the Son sets free is that's truth. Emotion is like sinking sand. You'll, you'll go, you, I'm telling you, but the truth is, the truth is that you were formed, you were designed, you were called in your mother's womb before you ever even open your eyes, God left his fingerprint on you. You're here at this very moment, at this very moment, day out of all of the timeline that you could have been born in. Think about this. I mean, I always look back and thought, man, the 50s would have been nice. You know what I'm saying? I think I had the hair for it, you know, and I could do that curl. My goodness, I mean, I'd slick it back, baby, and get that, you know, that, that, that uh, Elvis leg going and do it. You know, you know what I'm talking about? Of course, I can't dance, but I'd have to work on it. But, I, I, I mean, in going and driving those 57 Chevys, you know what I mean? I, th I think that's cool. Wouldn't have to worry about anything except a, a white T-shirt and some blue jeans. Hallelujah. It felt like I'd be, no, I wasn't called then. God didn't have that time for me. Maybe some of y'all. Some of y'all before that. <laughs> but you're here now. Why is it that God handpicked you for this moment? For this time? Man, I want to pinpoint the importance of you. I, wanna, I wish I could just, I wish I could let you see what God really wants for your life. Oh, just for a second, because you couldn't handle it all. Just for a moment, just for a, just like that. I'm going to tell you something. This is the truth. God has blessed me. I've been all over the country. Been all over the world, to be honest. I grew up in Beaverdam, Kentucky. There ain't much there except a dream. You know what I'm saying? I love it. I go back there, I love it more than anything, a rocking chair, a glass of sweet tea, and the Andy Griffin show, that's my life. That's my life, I love it, that's me. 
You do that, give me an also a, a Martin acoustic guitar, and I'm telling you, I could stay there for years. Right? That's just me. I love that. But I'm telling you, been all over the world. Who would have ever thought some body like me would have ever been called to see thousands upon thousands come to know Jesus? Listen, I was a nobody. Now, it's funny. Teachers now, I go back, <laughs> go back home, they go, oh, I just knew God had something special for you. You was just one of my favorites. And I'm like, well, what happened when I was out in the hall and you was wearing me out with that paddle? What, what was the deal then? Why was you always telling me, to the principal's office, Jason? I mean, why did I always hear that, you know? But it's funny, I'll go back and go, oh, I just knew you was gonna be something. I was like. <laughs> anyway, just funny how things change when you go back to town. It's like people that couldn't stand you now. Oh, I'm, hey, buddy, what's up? Not a, not a whole lot, really. <laughs> But, but here's what I'm saying, is I was probably one of the most least likely not to succeed in life. And I, I know that. But God, but God had a purpose and a plan for my life. I do know that. It's amazing. And I'm thankful for it. But here's the thing that I do know. To God be all of the glory because I know who I am without him, which is a giant mess. I'm talking about an ugly horrible, nasty mess. That's me without the grace and mercy of God. I probably wouldn't be alive today had it not been for him. You see, there's something about the scripture. What happened if Jeremiah would have said, okay, but no. Nah, that's probably for somebody else. You call me to this, and I'm going to tell you something. There is people right now sitting under the sound of my voice in this house that every time you come into a church house, you get fed, but you feel more than that, and you're saying, eh, nah, not me, maybe somebody else. Nah, not me, maybe somebody else. Nah, not me. I I'm not called... I, I'm, I'm just a child. I can't speak. I don't have the education that I need. I don't have the finances that I need. I don't have the pedigree. I don't have the look. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't. And you've got all of the, all of the excuses. One pre preacher said, you know what? And all of the buts. It's like, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but. Well, <laughs> and one guy said, he said, how about putting your butts on the altar this morning, all right? <laughs> And, and, and I think that's a great thing to do this morning. I think all of the excuses and all of the books and all of the stuff that keeps you from fulfilling what God has for your life, leave it at the altar today. Why? Because there's people that need you. Here's, here's the thing. I'm going to tell you a little story. Is that okay? I, I, I got a few. I got many. What time do we, we need to be out here at 1030, right? So I need to, okay, this, this is cool. I never get to speak, and, and, and it's also, I'm just like, yes. And then I'm going, whoa. Okay, so, all right, so here's a cool thing. I, I want to share a story with you, all right? I want to share a story about importance and about how much God loves you and about how much that he will, he, he will do everything in his power to search you out, find you where you are. Now listen to this. I was at the Grammys. Now this is a fun little story. Now I'm going to tell you a, an instance with me. At the Grammys, praise God. I love going to the Grammys, especially when we're up for one and we get to take one home. Hallelujah. Man, that's just a blessing. And we just got to with this last record uh, that y'all are going to buy a little later on. Yep. yep. <laughs> So anyways, uh, the last one, but the one before that, I'll never forget the, the first Grammy that we won. I was there, and I was so excited, got to walk the red carpet, walk the carpet with everybody that you can imagine. I'm telling you, Aerosmith walked by. Yes, they did, and, and, there, and then there goes Beyonce, and I'm like, what? And, and we're walking the red carpet with all of these people, you know? Uh, um, I, I remember seeing all of them, and, and, and 
everybody that you can imagine. We're walking. And I looked over at my wife at one of the moments, and I said, baby, I said, God, you know, I feel like we're going to stick out, you know, a little bit on the car. You know what I'm saying? Because I got this y'all and yeehaw kind of <laughs> voice, you know what I mean? And I'm getting ready to be interviewed by Joan and Melissa Rivers at the moment. Now think about that. Last name Crab. Last name Crab. <laughs> I sing gospel music and the last name Crab. And look at what I'm wearing. I had this big, ugly, crazy shirt. Anyways, so I'm thinking, I turned to my wife and I said, baby, I think we're going to stick out a little too much, you know, down here. And uh, I turn around <laughs> and look, and there stands Lady Gaga with a scepter or something in her hand. And she was wrapped, <laughs> she was wrapped in aluminum foil. And it looked like the Statue of Liberty. So, and I, I said, I turned back to my wife. I said, baby, I don't think we're going to stick out near enough now, do you? <laughs> and, it's just so funny. And so anyways, so, so we, we, we uh, went to our part of the, the deal. They put us on before. You know, they don't show it on the big TV. You know, it, we're gospel. So one day, I think the Lord's going to change that around. And they're going to show some gospel <laughs> at the Grammys and, and let it air. Amen? Let it air a little bit. Versus all the other nastiness that's going on. But anyways, I'll pray about that. But um, after we had won, I, I went up and accepted, uh, and I said, God is the giver of all great gifts. I love you, Jesus. And I got to mention his name. And so it was really, really, really cool. It was a, an incredible moment, and I'll never forget it. And I said, and this is truth, to God be all the glory. All of it. All of it. All right, so, so we fast forward. So we're there, we're staying two days after that, right? And we're staying in L.A. And we're going, okay, what are we going to do for two days to celebrate, right? And so somebody said, hey, let's go. Let's go to uh, The Price is Right. <laughs> what a way to celebrate winning a Grammy, right? So we go to The Price is Right. And, and so... It, I mean, because, look, it's dear to my heart. That was one of the only things that I got to watch, you know, growing up on TV. We had two channels. You remember that, that antenna out on the end of the house? And you would have your, your child run out there, which would have been me, and run out there and go, can you turn the antenna a little bit? It's moved. And, and there, you're yelling through the house, right? Because it's on the other end of the house. Hey! Turn it some up. Whoa, hold it right there. Don't move. It's like you're going to hold it through their whole program. You know what I mean? Some of you youngins don't understand what I'm talking about, but it's true. And so anyways, the price is right. Seemed like it was always on. And so I thought, man, I want a Grammy. What's the chances of this? I might get to spin the big wheel. Nope. <laughs> Didn't get to spin the wheel. You might say, what's that got to do with the point of time? Here's what I'm going to tell you. As we are standing there waiting to get to go in for the prices right, it was about 5 o'clock. Uh, we got up to go and get in line. We get there about 6-something, standing there in line, and, and you have to wait for about three hours. Now think about this. To get into the prices right, you're standing there for about three hours. You have to show up before a lot of other people show up or you have no chance of getting in. You wouldn't believe the lines. You wouldn't believe it. So anyway, we're standing there, and I get thirsty. And I'm thinking, man, I'm thirsty. All of a sudden, I don't know if the Lord sent this little guy from heaven or what, but here comes a little guy. He's pushing a little cart, hot dog cart. Praise God, then I all of a sudden got hungry. You know what I'm saying? And so he's pushing the cart aside, and he went over to the side, and, and, and my family... My wife is there and my manager and my sister-in-law standing there in line. And I said, y'all hold our spot. I'm going to go get something to drink. So I, I went up and I was going to get something to eat too. I just didn't want to tell them. And so I got in line and I'm standing there and I'm, and I'm waiting to order, right? And I'm, as I'm waiting to order because it already had a line, this bus pulls up. All right. The bus pulls up. I don't pay much attention to it. But anyways, it, it just... Kind of, I could tell, have you ever felt like somebody was just staring at you? You know what I mean? It's just like, and you didn't want to be like over the top rude or anything. But the bus pulls up, the door opens, and, and this guy, he's just kind of looking. So I turned to him, I said, hey, buddy. 
He goes, I know you. And I'm thinking, no, probably not. I'm from Beaver Dam, Kentucky. We're here in L.A. You probably don't know me. You know what I mean? And he goes, no, I know you. I saw you. I saw you when I was in prison. You were on TBN, and you were singing a song called Through the Fire. He said, I know that's you. And I'm thinking, well, Shazam, he does know me. You know what I mean? And uh, so anyway, we started talking, and that was a uh, rehab center that they had all got together and was doing an outing because he was fighting drug addiction. And they were all together, and they were coming to the prices Right. So anyways, I'm standing in line, you know, and he sees it, and we talk for a minute. And Christopher, this is what I, I, I say to him. I said, how are you doing now? Doing okay. No, I'm a mess. Young man. Young man. Good looking young man, but you could tell sin had taken his toe on him. You know what I mean? So anyway, I keep talking to him. And I said, can I tell you something? I looked at him and I said, God has a plan for your life. He said, did you just hear me? He said, I'm in a drug rehab. I just got out of prison. How can God have a plan for you? I said, he does. I'm telling you, he does. I got ready to go in. I got my drinks and stuff. I didn't think much more about it. I'm getting ready to go in. I see him again. I said, I'm telling you, God's got a plan for your life. Get ready. And it just like a, a whisper in my ear, he said, God said, he's really the whole reason you're even here. And I went, now wait a minute. I thought it was for the Grammys. I thought it was for spinning the big wheel, which I didn't get to do. No, it was for that young man that was in a rehab center to just tell him that God has a plan for his life. Now, you might say, man, that is a long story. No, nope, look, here's the deal. You got to understand every footstep, every moment, every minute second, everything had to be lined up, even the ideas, the thoughts, the emo emotions of everything. God will manipulate everything that he has to just to get you to stand in line for a hot dog and a soft drink for a blue bus to pull up at the right spot for him to walk off and to see you standing there at the right time, at the right moment to say, God has a plan for you. Why? Because he does. Why? Because it's important. Why? Because I'm telling you, I'm telling you, if you would only know what God has for you, if you could see it, if you could see it, we're all the time saying, oh, we're ready to change the world. We're going to change the world. We're ready to do this. No. Let's do it. You're called to it. You're called to it. I'm telling you, with this church right here, with this, your pastors and this anointing and this music, I'm telling you, you talking about turning Owensboro and neighboring cities upside down. I mean, I'm talking about turning it upside down. With the gifts that are inside of you, each one of you are called. Each one of us. Go share your story. Go do it. God's got it for you. Here's what I'm going to say. Everything, we, we, we have to do this. Now, I've got two, two minutes. We're going to give altar service two minutes. We might need a little music. Might a little, uh, little something, something, if you want. A little tinkling uh, of the ivories. <laughs> hey, let me ask you this. What's your excuse? What's your excuse? I told you, I said, it pays to be in the right place. I was reading about Ruth on the way over here. Um, it's crazy. I was in Ohio Friday. Got back from Ohio to Nashville, caught a plane at, at about 6 o'clock, so I had to get up at 5 to go to Vegas. I was in Vegas yesterday. I did a Vegas show at MGM Studio at 2 o'clock. 
turned around, got on an airplane, caught the bus last night at 1 o'clock in the morning, got here, got up at 9, or actually I got up at 8.30 to tell you why, why did I do that? Let me tell you something. It would have been easy for me to lay my head down and said, well, let's just do a concert. No, God had an appointment. God had an appointment. Thank you, Pastor, for letting me do this. You called me and asked me. You said, will you preach? Look, I'm telling you, this right here is what it's about for me. I love to sing. I love it more than anything. But let me tell you something. If I can if I can encourage anything inside of you to go, there's more to life than what I'm living. And I'm ready to take the bull by the horns. And I'm getting ready to ride life out like nobody's business. With the help of God and with the glory of God and with what he has for me. I'm ready to do it. I'm telling you, get ready. Wouldn't it be amazing right here in the middle of Orangeburg, Kentucky, the, one of the greatest revivals that had ever take place in, in, in the history of Kentucky and it started with somebody going, yeah, yeah, that's the reason I'm here. Why do I get started in that? Go tell somebody they need to get here. Go witness, go tell them. Be that on time, that moment. Just ask God for those appointments, those appointments. Give me, God, those appointments, those moments. I could share appointments all day with you. God moments, God appointments. Pays to be in the right place at the right time. All of the excuses are gone, okay? Our butts are on the altar. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Can you imagine some of the kids going home and telling them, my mom, what did Jason preach about? Well... I think I remember he said something about putting your butt on the altar. <laughs> That's going to be great. I mean, <laughs> they'll go, well, you ain't going back there. Sorry, Pastor. <laughs> uh, no more excuses, okay? No more excuses. Everybody stand to your feet. First thing that we've got to get right is our heart. Some of you would say, you know what? I know there needs to be a change in my life. There has to be. There has to be a change in my life. With every head bowed and every eye closed, I'm going to do the churchy thing. This is this is what I grew up. I know, and I can't help it. How many would say with the I, bring the lights up a little bit because I want to be able to see their hands just for a second. I, I I I want to ask you this question: How many would say in this house? I know I'm not where I need to be with Jesus. There has to be a change. My life is not where it needs to be. I do know that. I know that there has to be a change. If that is you, on the count of three, with nobody looking around, I'd love for you to raise your hand. You ready? One, two, three. Raise your hand. That is me right there. That is me. That is me. There has to be a change. There has to be a change. I see your hands all over the building, all over the building. You can put your hands down. You can put your hands down. How many would say, you know what? I didn't start out this way. I've just grown code on God, and I and and I just need a new commitment to Him because I want to fulfill. I want to. I want to be that what He wants me to be. If that is you, come on, just raise your hand. You ready? One, two, three. If that is you, right now, raise your hand. I, I see hands all over the building. Now you can put your hands down. Here's the last thing that I'm going to do. How many would say this? How many would say this? I know that there's more to life than what I'm living, and I've been living in excuses and buts. But today, I'm in the right place. I'm in the right place to start this journey that I know God has for me. If that is you, you ready? One, two, three. Raise your hand. That is me. There's more to life than what I'm living. Here's what I want you to do. What are you, what are you playing, baby? Good. Sing that. As soon as she starts singing it, I want you to get up here and I want you to stand. Now, we're going to have to do this in a hurry because we've got another service we got to get to. You ready? Those of you that raise your hands, do not, do not, do not, do not stay in your seat. Get up here. Ready? One, two, three. Go. Get up here. All my life come, you come, have come. been faithful. Come. All right. We're all going to pray together. Come on. All my life you have been so, so.
up in the altars, those of you that are in the in the, in the uh, congregation, I want you to turn to the person that's beside you right now. Take them by the hand and say, hey, neighbor, if you want to go pray, I'll go with you. Is there anything you want to take to Jesus? Come on, let's get it taken care of this, this Sunday morning. Is there anything we need to take care of? Come on, is there anything in the house we need to take care of? Come on, you want to go pray? Come on, I'll go with you. Come on, just take them by the hand and say, let's go. You want to go? Come on, I'll go with you. Is there something you want to bring to the cross? Is there something you want to give to Jesus? Is there an answer that you need this morning? Come on, get up here. Hurry. Now, I want everybody to repeat it. Yeah, they still coming. Come on. Come on, come on, come on. You ready? Now, let's everybody pray this prayer. Say, Heavenly Father, I'm asking you to forgive me of all my sins. Jesus. I need you. Thank you for choosing me. You chose me. And today, I choose you to be Lord of my life. Thank you, Holy Ghost, for convicting me. Thank you, Holy Ghost, because you're going to lead me. You're going to guide me. Thank you, Jesus, for what you did. Did for me. I claim it. Thank you, God, for forgiving me, for setting me free, for blessing me. I claim it. All that you have, I claim it for my life. What you called me to, I pick it up. I grasp the mantle. I wrap it around my body. This is what you've called me to. Lead me. Guide me. Direct me. Let me be a peace of this great revival that's sweeping across this country. It's starting with me. Starting with me. Starting in my home. Starting in my life. Starting in my family. Starting right now. Revive me, God. Amen. And amen. If there's healing that needs to take place, he was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we are. Uh, by his stripes, we are. By his stripes, we are. In the name of Jesus. Give God all the credit, all the glory, and all the praise. Give him praise this morning. Turn to your neighbor. Say, neighbor, you are somebody. You are somebody. Come on. Turn to your neighbor. Say, neighbor, you are somebody.